We are here at Pick Q and Co, which is, in my mind, one of the restaurants that really set the groundwork for the barbecue explosion that has ripped through London. A friend of mine, Jamie Berger, who went, I went to school with in the 70s, ended up starting Pick Q many years later. And a very good friend of his, Tom Adams, is a chef there who has now moved on to rearing pigs in rural Cornwall, which supplies the restaurant. It's going to be fascinating to see the evolution of Pick and Co. It started off as a stand down by the river that was seasonal. They then found a very small place in Soho that could seat, you know, probably about 25 or 30 people. But Tom Adams, the chef, was doing some amazing food that really defined what British barbecue has become. Oh my God, this place is enormous. This is a, uh, a testament to the evolution, I think, of British barbecue. How long have you been open here for? Oh, actually, just over a year now. Just over a year. And really, when they opened, it was what you would expect a barbecue restaurant. Yeah. Pull pork ribs, um, those kind of things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, they started off with just the pulled pork, the buns, the caramel ribs, and yeah. So Tom, who was the original chef and really the, the mind behind... Yeah, behind he still is very much involved as well. Yeah, and of I mean. course, that pork. So he, he moved basically to Cornwall to rear pigs and become a farmer and like engage in this whole sort of agrarian B and B lifestyle dream, yeah, that, right? right yeah. So, but you get your pork from obviously from down there. Yeah, yeah. So we've got um, we've got a herd of mangalitsa pigs down there, about sort of 200 to 300 strong. So tell us about mangalitsas because they're quite unique, right? Yeah. Not not it's not a breed that you see every day on menus. No, so they're a they're a rare breed of pigs, and they they were brought over really from from Hungary, um, and they're the original charcuterie pigs. So they're very very fatty. It's a heritage breed, right? Yeah. But kind of untouched by modern farming, so it never really got diluted. Its bloodlines are quite yeah, pure, right. so you retain those really positive characteristics. Right. Tell me about what you cook with, because you're using uh, wood, right? Yeah, the Life Fire restaurant? Yeah, we're supplied by a very interesting man called uh, Mark Parr, or Lord Logs. Know him well. Um, and he, so he supplies with English oak and magic charcoal. Uh, the charcoal we use just for heat, um, and it's compressed charcoal, so it, it keeps its heat really well. And then we just feed that fire with uh, with oak, just to give that smoke really nice earthy earthy flavour. We have to eat the pork pork sandwich, obviously. Pork pork sandwich. Uh, tell me about the ribs. The chipotle caramel ribs, prime rib steak, mm -hmm. and we take all the bones that off the back of that, give them a good uh, sort of rub with our barbecue rub, smoke them, and then they, after they're smoked, they get deep fried and covered in the chipotle caramel sauce. So that is what we would call a beef pack rib in the States. What do you think we should eat from the noon menu? We will have to try the mangalitsa chop. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for sure, just because it's an amazing piece of meat. Right. You gonna eat all that? After a fashion. I'm just gonna try. These lads will help me. We have the, uh, the ribs. We have the classic pulled pork sandwich where it all started. We have the Mangalista pork chop. What else could you possibly need? So something we didn't discuss earlier, Nick, a little surprise. We've got a crispy pig's tails with oh. uh, chipotle caramel and some uh, grilled kimchi as well, which oh. is an original classic. Thank from the, uh, Apparently uh, there is spot. something more that we need. Tell me about these, uh, about these pig tails. And they're smoked in oil. So they put in a tray of oil in the smoker. So they're okay. almost comfy, but pick up some of that nice smoke as well. And then they're deep fried and covered in chipotle caramel sauce. And there you have them. Cheers, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much, thank you. I have to say that this has evolved slightly from the original pork pork sandwich that I had. It was never a classic pork pork sandwich, it was always a play on a pork pork sandwich. I don't think people realized it, but if you've been to the Carolinas and you try the pork pork there, you knew that what Tom was doing was was kind of a homage to that as, as much as it was a, you know, a parroting of it. Oh. Oh. Well, that takes me back at least five years. It's very similar to the pulled pork that I first had. It has progressed a bit, and I think that actually it's gotten a bit more savory over time. But that's the whole thing about PicQ. It's a constant like reimagining of the form. It's got some evocations that are distinctly British, especially the sort of very savory notes. So it, it's really playing on local taste, I think, as much as, you know, barbecue expectations. Absolutely delicious. Let's actually try this bone marrow mash. Wow, really creamy. And it's just got that velvety mouthfeel that you get with bone marrow. It kind of just coats the whole palate. Really quite, quite delicious. Let's dig into the 
beef back rib. Wow. So the deep frying gives you that external crunch, but then you have the smokiness and you're getting that flavor. Because of the sweetness of the sauce, it actually tastes a lot more like pork than a beef rib. Um, yet, you've got all the meatiness of the beef rib. You've got this, you know, this big bite that you can get out of it. I mean, look at that. Let's move on to the pig's tail. This is a challenging piece of meat to cook, to say the least, because basically, it's a lot of cartilage. It's a lot of interconnected little, little bones and muscles. There's a lot of collagen in there that needs to be broken down into gelatin. Wow. So it's very gelatinous, quite fatty, but very, very flavorful. And they paired it with this really sort of sweet, sticky sauce. Totally balances out the fat. Really a great, great pig's tail. If this is all they did, like seriously, that would all be required. I mean, they could probably just keep selling these two dishes forever. What we have here is really an advancement, you know, Tom Adams started the restaurant, set the template, but you know, I really feel like Oscar's kind of made this restaurant his own now, and these are his dishes, so let's, let's, let's look at the future of Pick Hue & Co. Let's move this fruit off to the side. It's kind of obscuring the, uh, obscuring the main event, which is this luscious, beautiful looking pork chop. Look at the color on that. They brew beer back there, and all of the beer, what's left over from the beer process, all the hops and the barley that's left over, that gets fed to the pigs on the farm, which makes its way back into the restaurant in the form of this lovely pork chop. You're gonna have to hold with me for a sec, because this might be the best pork chop I've ever eaten, but I have to have another bite, like fucking hell. I'm gonna eat the spinalis out here and a piece of the fat. This has an unctionness to it. It just like coats your whole, like, you feel it down here though, the way the pork fat gets you. But it's sweet too. It's really, I, I mean, I'm having a moment with this pork chop. It comes on, like you, you put it in your mouth and it's almost like, it's so tender, it's almost like sushi. Like that kind of, that kind of tenderness. Then you get this sort of smoky, beefy flavor, very steak-like. And then at the end, you have that gentle, sweet pork finish. Uh, I'm sold. This is like one of the great pork chops in the world. Look at the color of that. That's actually a, a lot of the reason why this pork chop tastes so good, because they haven't hammered the meat, right? It's still, it still tastes like meat. It's an interesting journey from this pulled pork sandwich to this pork chop, because this was really almost like a whimsical thing. Let's get together and sell some pulled pork on the, uh, on the side of the Thames for a summer. Should be a good lark, you know? It turns out into this like restaurant that has really redefined the way that English people eat meat. And I think now it's also redefined the way that English people are gonna rear meat. I encourage you to get to London, visit PQ. Also, you should click here and watch the next episode of The Meat Show. I'm gonna go in there and eat the Big Bombay, which is an Indian take of the English breakfast.